I just had this like young, scrappy, hungry energy. Like I was like, okay, I need to raise money to buy period products to get them to 20 homeless women a week in Portland because I knew 20 homeless women, right? And so I just said, okay, first order of business, I'm gonna raise some money. And I would literally talk to anyone who would listen. I would try playing guitar on 23rd Street and raise like 20 bucks in five hours, realize that was not a good use of my time. So I started just trying to go into places where people already had to be and talk to them about periods. I would like go to Fidelity Insurance and ask if I could talk at their staff meetings. I would go to the Jiffy Lube Auto Mechanics store and talk, ask if I could talk to their staff meetings. And I would just like try to present and try these different pitches and I would notice, especially when talking to like male dominant spaces like the Auto Mechanics store, when I said the word periods and menstruation, their sandwiches would drop in disgust. <laughs> And for some reason, as I was founding the organization, that was one of the most motivating things. Because when I would see people physically react to me simply saying the word period, I would have this reaction like, you're the problem, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and so with that energy, I was like, okay, just keep saying the word periods, talking about this more. My mom really pushed me to also just like focus on periods and just try to solve this issue. Vince and I just started gathering money. I refined my pitch by practicing, went on eventbrite.com, found every pitch competition in the area, won all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we just started buying every store. We would travel to all around Oregon and all around Washington, literally wipe them out of period products, gather our friends together, and put together packages of period products. Uh, because we realized when I started calling nonprofits, on our first order business, we like took some of the packages, went out to Old Town Portland, started distributing them, and were out there for four hours with a line of homeless women that had lined up on the bridge saying, oh my gosh, we've never seen period products being offered. We go to these shelters and they don't have period products. And simply by talking to the organizations in downtown Portland, we realized, and actually around the US as well at the time, most nonprofits and shelters don't provide free period products in a really accessible way, either due to a lack of funds or a lack of displayed need, right? Because these products are expensive, so they keep them behind the counter. So for a homeless menstruator to, go, to get them, they have to go up to often the male authority of the shelter and say, hello, I'm menstruating and I need a pad, right? But because of the stigma around periods, that is not always the most comfortable thing to do, so the need goes completely unaddressed. So we just started putting them into packages in this formula that we thought would address the average menstrual cycle, giving them out to every shelter in the area and just stocking them so they could give them out freely. Because we're young, we were young teenagers at the time, social media had become like sort of an extension of our self-expression. We were just updating our social media feeds with what we were doing, just trying to gather our friends and get them together. No real goal of like expanding nationally at that point, but just trying to let our family friends know what we were up to. And within a few months, we had hundreds of messages from students, just young people, journalists from all over the country who were saying, we've never thought about this, how do we do this in our community? So we wrote down what I, we did in ours in a Google Doc and started spreading it around and calling it a chapter playbook. And within a year, we had like six chapters in all around the country and we were have, building this national global period network. Fast forward four years, what is period today? Period is now a global youth-run NGO that fights to end period poverty and period stigma through service, education, and advocacy. So what that looks like is we distribute period products to people in need, we're trying to change the way people think, talk, and learn about periods through education, and we're now working in policy from the local to the national level, trying to get period products to be freely accessible in schools, shelters, and prisons, repealing the tampon tax in the remaining 35 states, and trying to get things like food stamps to cover period products because they don't currently. Um, 